Welcome to week 10 and this week we're focused on wills. Now while this might be one of the most common reasons why people see a lawyer and there's lots of precedents out there for you to use when drafting a will, it can still be a difficult task and that's because drafting a will is often emotionally charged for the client. They're thinking about their own mortality and they may become upset when they start to talk about property distribution to beneficiaries because it brings out family issues or fallings out with certain people. And while you're trying to convert what the test data wants onto paper, the real audience is the executors and beneficiaries. So that means that you are uh, acting in a dual role here. You are facilitating the test data and trying to ensure that their wishes are converted into paper. Uh, and also at the same time bearing in mind that you need to draft it with sufficient clarity that the executors and beneficiaries know exactly what the testator wants. Bear in mind that of course the beneficiaries and executors won't be able to refer to the testator for guidance on how to interpret or apply the provisions, so clarity is absolutely essential and that's really your primary obligation. Now, as the study guide explains, there are lots of formalities regarding wills. So you need to indicate that is it is the last will and testament and revoke other wills. Otherwise, there's a risk that they might be read in combination with earlier wills. You need to nominate executors and include a testimonium. And once it's completed, you need to ensure that, that it is uh, signed in the presence of witnesses. It's also quite usual to include funeral instructions as well. Before you begin drafting though, you should assure yourself that intention and legal capacity to make the will exists. You also need to be sure that you're acting for the client and not someone else who wants a particular outcome in the estate. Undue influence and unconscionable conduct are regularly seen in this environment, so you should always be alert to it. And it's not just a partner that can influence the testator. It can be children, stepchildren, friends, or even individuals who work for the testator, such as cleaners or carers or gardeners, who have the capacity to exercise influence as a result of their relationship with the testator. It's best to see the client alone wherever possible. Now, aside from the formalities, your drafting will need to focus on the testator's property and the scheme of distribution. This is where you'll need to exercise your drafting mus muscles because unless it's a very basic will, it is unlikely that the precedent will do everything that you need it to do here and you'll have to do some drafting yourself. You will first need to ask the testator to identify what property they hold and where they want that to be distributed or how they want that to be distributed. And then it's your task to identify the property in the will with sufficient specificity that anyone not closely associated with the test data could still identify what property is being uh, distributed. Now that can be pretty tricky. You also need to identify uh, whether or not the items of property that the test data own will be given as specific gifts to particular individuals or whether it will just fall into a residuary estate, so that's just everything left over, uh, and then identify who will receive that residuary estate. Once you have an idea of what property uh, falls within the testator's estate and whether any specific gifts are to be made, you must turn your attention to beneficiaries. Now, note that the, that the testator may want more than just immediate family to benefit. They might want to make charitable donations or gifts to friends. And it's really important that you identify the beneficiaries with sufficient clarity so that the executors know how to distribute the estate. The testator may also want more complex arrangements than mere gifts, and you will be required to set up trusts for particular individuals. So your knowledge of trust law will become very important at this stage. We also need to consider what happens if one of the beneficiaries does not survive the testator in between now and the testator's death. Does the testator want a clause that indicates what should happen to the share that belonged to that particular beneficiary? Has the testator considered the possibility of further children or grandchildren? And does that need to be written into the beneficiary's uh, clause? 
Should this be catered for in the drafting in a particular way? So these are matters that you need to turn your mind to when you're considering beneficiaries. Now the workshop is uh, based on a basic will drafting exercise. It doesn't contain some of the complexity we've just discussed like a discretionary trust, but it does require you to carefully think about the structure and how you are describing the property and the beneficiaries. Now, while you might be able to find a precedent online or even look at your own copy of a will if you have one, I'm asking you not to do that. The, the task is not to produce a perfect will. The task is to test your drafting skills and see what you come up with without any assistance whatsoever. So please make sure that you don't cheat and you bring a copy of your draft will to the workshop so that we can talk about it together. I'll see you then.